Good morning. Welcome to our worship service today. My name is Pastor Joseph Dietrich. I serve at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Bylas, Arizona, and I am here for our uh, our service of February 5, 2023. And we will we first of all, we will begin with some words of some prayers to our God. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for our sins on the cross. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we pray the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you sent your one and only Son as the word of a life for our eyes to see and our ears to hear. Help us believe that the scriptures, what the scriptures proclaim about him and do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The word of God for this fourth Sunday after Pentec after the Epiphany. The first lesson is recorded for us in Exodus chapter 19, verses 1 to 8. On the first day of the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on that very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you fully obey me and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. And so Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, We will do everything the Lord has said. And so Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our New Testament lesson is recorded for us in 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 9. And notice how God declares that we are his special people through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now 
you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires, which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives that among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, you may, they may see your good works and glorify God on the day he visits us. This is the word of the Lord. The gospel lesson for today, which is be, will be our sermon, is recorded in Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the room. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of our God. And we pray Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us today as we turn to your word for wisdom, truth, and the message of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Give us ears to hear and hearts to believe your word of truth. Remove our fears and doubts and fill us with faith in Jesus. Amen. Who is Jesus? Today we continue a series of sermons entitled The Big Reveal. And again, we are in the Epiphany season, and Epiphany means light shining season. It's the season where the light of God's word shines on Jesus to reveal who he is. Who is Jesus? The scriptures proclaim he is, first of all, he's the king long promised from God. And we saw that a few weeks ago when the Lord used a star to guide the Magi to Bethlehem where they worshiped Jesus, their king. And we've also seen that at Jesus' baptism, the heavens opened and the father spoke, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Jesus is God's son, and we are to listen to him. And then then after that, at his baptism, or after, after that, we heard John the Baptist say that, look, there is the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sin of the world. After we heard John say that, He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
we, we learned that he is a teacher. And he started to lead, lead disciples to, to follow him. And we have, and, and now today, we, we have the, the, uh, the big reveal that Jesus now gives us, his disciples and his believers who follow him, a most important purpose and place in the Lord's epiphany, the Lord's great reveal of who he is. We noted last week that when Jesus began his ministry by gathering men to follow him to be his disciples, and as he gathered his disciples around him, that there were certain things that came to those disciples really quite quickly. The first truth that we saw was from Andrew after he had been with Jesus for only a few hours. The first thing he did is he ran and he told his brother Simon Peter, we have found the Christ, the Messiah, the promised one of God. He was sure. And then when the, other, the others started to follow Jesus, it wasn't hard for them to follow him too because as Philip said, he knew me before I even saw him. He must be special. He's the anointed one. Yes, the disciples had a good impression of Jesus right away. But what they didn't know was how Jesus would carry out his work of bringing salvation and what it would mean for his followers. For example, many people had a picture in their minds of what the, the Messiah would do. And they thought that he would be like the king of the Jews and he would set up an earthly kingdom of power, a kingdom of heaven on earth. He would put away the, the Romans and other governments and then he would set up his kingdom in Jerusalem and they would rule all things and they would be powerful and rich. And a little bit of that comes out in the Gospels when the, the disciples at times would uh, jostle and go against each other saying uh, things like, who's the greatest? Am I greater than you? And see, in their heads, they were thinking of a kingdom of heaven on earth. With these visions of glory in their heads, many people had no clue that Jesus would actually lay down his life on the cross and die as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. They didn't know that he came to be served and not to, he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And since Jesus' disciples didn't quite yet understand what his work was to be, they had very little idea on who they were to be. And so today, as we have been revealing who Jesus is in the Epiphany season, today we listen to Jesus teach his disciples in Matthew 5 in the Sermon on the Mount how they are his disciples. And as we listen to Jesus, he says to them, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. This is part of the Sermon on the Mount and Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he tells them that they are the salt of the earth. But he leaves them with a warning that if they lose their saltiness, they will be thrown out and trampled on the ground. What does Jesus mean when he talks about the salt of the earth? Salt is used in many ways in our world. One we think of right away is putting flavor to our food. Uh, uh, another way, it's sometimes it's put in eye drops for the eyes or or up north in the winter time, salt is put on the road to melt the snow and the ice. But 
The main purpose, the main use of salt throughout the centuries before refrigeration was to, was to keep and to, uh, <laughs> was to keep food, to, to preserve food. And, and that's how food was preserved and people could eat through the long winters or, or on long voyages. Uh, you would use salt for canning or for, uh, for um, meat, for uh, pickles, for uh, olives, for uh, cabbage, for any kind of meat or it, you would put it put the, the, it into a vat and layer it with salt and put liquid there, a brine, and that would keep the food edible for a long, long time. And so with salt, food could be kept and people lived. And it's in this sense that Jesus calls his disciples salt. Salt makes life better. Salt sustains life. So also Christians who follow and live God's word bring health and good to those around him. They bring God's kindness, goodness, compassion, forgiveness, and truth from being in his word. God, God himself blesses them as they live in, accord, live in and according to God's word. The psalmist, the psalmist writes, he says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He says, Blessed is the one who listens and reads the word of God. And then they say he's like a tree planted by streams of water. It bears fruit in season. Its leaf doesn't wither. This is the, wor the way the word of God fills, fills us and, and brings life and light to the believer. And like salt preserves and uh, God, God's word preserves us and gives us blessings to preserve godly living and the fruits of godly living by God's word. And so this is why Jesus says, if you lose your saltiness, you might as well be thrown out and trampled on the road. Don't lose your saltiness. Salt of the earth people live in God's word and they bring God's goodness, kindness, compassion, and truth of the word to the world. Let's be salty and bring this word of Christ to the world. We're also the light of the world. Light of the world. How so? Light pierces the darkness. Light takes darkness away. And the light we have is nothing less than the word and message of Jesus Christ. The message that he brings, that he is the Christ, the Son of God, our Savior, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, this message brings light and life to us, so much so that we become the light of the world. His light becomes our light, and our light becomes the light of the world. This is a great responsibility, no matter where we are in the world. For Jesus, God could have told the angels to be the light of the world and let the angels fly around and shine the light of Christ and his word on people. But he didn't. God also could have sent Jesus in the flesh all around the world to speak and to show himself. But he didn't. He called, he chose to send his disciples to go into all the world, teaching them to observe everything that God, he had commanded us. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age, says Jesus. 
He chose his, belev- his believers, wherever they are, to light be the light of the of God in their in their setting. And so he chose to use moms and dads to teach their children and lead them in the way of righteousness. He chose to, for us believers to shine the light of Jesus Christ, our faith, wherever we are in this world. And he says, don't hide your light. Don't put your light under a basket. Don't turn your light off and go to places where you'd rather act as if you're not a Christian for a while. Let the light of your faith shine. Strengthen the light of your faith by faithful worship and joining in Bible classes. Let your light shine in your home with your family. Read your Bible. Read it with the, your children and or, and or your spouse. Practice forgiveness, kindness, compassion, and faithfulness to God's word. Speak the truth and repent and say you are sorry when you need to. Let the light of Jesus Christ shine in you and through you in all that you do. And now Jesus says in verse 17 to 20 in our text, he says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished." Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands it will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' main point in this section is that he did not come to abolish the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them. And he fulfilled God's law right down to the last dot of an I. He kept all of God's law, all of God's word, and then he gave himself all of himself on the cross for the sins of the world. And be by that, all of God's word is fulfilled. The law has been kept and he has taken away all of our sins. He has fulfilled all things perfectly. And so Jesus says there's two things that we ought not to do. First thing we ought not to do is act as if, well, since Jesus has finished all the work, since he has forgiven me, then I can just go and do whatever I want. A lot of people have done this in history. Since I am forgiven, it doesn't matter what I do. I can just keep doing um, the wrong that I do and God will forgive me. No, Jesus says no. That is not how we are to act. We are not to throw away the law just because Jesus forgives us. We are to follow his word and listen to him. And secondly, on the other hand, we are, since Jesus has fulfilled all of the scriptures and all of the law, he is our only savior. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot act as if our good works will bring salvation. No. We trust only in Jesus. He is our Savior. And we do all that we do in thankfulness to him, for he has fulfilled all scripture. And that brings us back to Jesus' word to all of his believers. You are the salt of the earth. Stay salty. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine. Yes, may we be 
what Jesus has made us to be. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we join in, in prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And receive with believing hearts the blessing of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you and with favor and give you his peace. Nikaj it in gladulus, Biscochupa e Maca Nica Dadalus, Shaistego, Nidad Zadalus, Gajole.